Before we start the video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I appreciate all the support I received from you. And as always, all the information in my videos is rumors taken from the internet or the street. I'm not saying the information is fact. Don't pick your man's up. That's because people used to come through Shimnos every day. This block, words can't even explain. Can't even explain. Hey man, what's going on, brother? Young money, man, in the building. Six hundred boy, LA man, LA Capone man, get to him man. Those are two boys, man. Team Capone, number nine, man, number nine, shoot him, hear me? You have to be willing to die or go to jail for a hundred years if that's the lane that you're stepping in. You have to understand that whether you're 15, 16, you got to think like a man. You know what I'm saying? Like, so don't 16. be in it. Oh, you're not? Uh, Why does everybody say you're only 16 years old? They say what they want to say. How old, so how old are you? 300. <laughs> The story of Pocket Town, final part. Pocket Town is, 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 is a neighborhood over east, east side of Chicago. Okay. Hated by many, supported by none, though you know. Okay. The final part of this trilogy will largely be about the war between Pocket Town slash KTS and Drench Gang slash No Limit. In late September 2017, Geo Drive slash Mob lost a member named Lil Mike. Lil Mike was shot and killed in an alley in the 6400 block of South Langley Avenue. He had been at a party that was apparently hosted by Pocket Town and was walking home by himself. Hi, Lil Mike who hung out a lot with Lil Sean from Mob, was cool with Pocket Town and therefore attended the party. Lil Mike was allegedly killed by Fats and Lil Twin from 800, two members that are known for backdoor, and Fats is currently facing life in prison for a triple murder that occurred in late 2021, where him and Tuan killed an armored truck guard together with Spook and Doovy 4 from Face World 079. They then later robbed a cell phone store and then Lil Tuan and Fats killed both Spook and Doovy 4, backdooring them. Anyway, Lil Twin was allegedly arrested and charged with the murder of Lil Mike, however, there is no record of this since he was only 14 years old at the time. Lil Twin ended up beating the case. The reason why I mention this, is not only because Lil Mike attended a Pocket Town party, but also because he is the brother of Lil Art from Pocket Town. This murder is a big reason why Pocket Town and 800 are beefing today, along with the fact Sko from 800 took a gun from a Pocket Town member after that member stole $150 from him in 2021. After that incident, Lil Don from Pocket Town and Lil Fats and WAP from 800 went back and forth on Instagram. WAP said him and Lil Don bumped into each other in the county. WAP apparently told Lil Don that they will give the gun back because what Sko did was bogus and they have the same ops for Mac Creek, so they should not be into it with each other. He also told Lil Don that Sko could not come back to the block after that incident. However, the gun was never returned. Lil Fats then joined the conversation and stated that multiple people from Pocket Town were shot after that incident. Lil Don then claimed that after he was released from jail in 2019, Lil Fats got caught sliding on Pocket Town and got blown down with his gun on him. Lil Fats then states that he shot a G Muski from the pocket at a bus stop the following day. He follows up that statement by asking Lil Don how many funerals he has caused and then puts up five fingers, hinting about his own body count. 
Lil Don responded by saying that he can't talk bodies with him, because he can go toe to toe if he wants. That is a short summary of what was said, it was basically a whole lot of woofing back and forth. Listen, the pipe got took. Okay, you can say you can say the pipe got took. You can say folks say you weren't aggressive, but on Cairo, on Diddy, multiple people got shot after that. On Diddy, ain't nobody from 800 got shot. On Cairo. Hey, folks. Hey, folks. Multiple people. Who got, who got shot? Who got shot? Name, 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 Exactly, you nigga. You if you can't okay, talk, okay, nigga. Okay, hey, I'm okay, telling you, bro. I, I got little money in his face or his neck or whatever. Okay, okay. Uh, he glizzy got popped. Muff, Motherfuckers, family members got shot in their stomach and had to abort their baby. All type of shit. Who else? The nigga Fat Mark. So, okay, look, as you said all that, how many people? How many people count? Okay, so so so. Okay, what? You get look. Not mix it up, fuck. How many people count? How many Marcus people got shot? How many people from 800 got shot behind? Who got when that happened? I can't who speak on that. I was in jail. Got, I was in jail. But since I've been out, what happened? Hey, Let's facts. What happened since I've been out of jail, folks? Y'all ain't did shit. You got blew down with one of these, right? You got blew down with one of these, right? Oh, Kevin, you what happened? You tried to get that bitch out of my bag, right? What happened? what happened the next day? And did I, get I don't hit? know what happened the next day, folks. I don't know why. I get hit? You got one of these, right? Day? You a real nigga. You a real nigga. What happened the next day? You a real nigga. What happened the next day? Two times. I don't know what day. happened. I don't know what happened the day before. Two times in one day on Pyro. Two times in one day. Well, I know what happened the day before. You oh, had okay, one of these. Okay, you can make okay, it through okay. it. I know you can make it through it. Yeah, I know you. Don't say no ass there between the time. Who got yeah, that who, ass left who, who in the car? Who got something to put hey, okay, You was dead so, between so the cars, bro. You goofy, Mark. It's a goofy. Look, look, <laughs> yo, homie, look, I got a goofy on his face. You mad as hell, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you shitty, yo, Pyro. Yo, homie, got a goofy hey, yo, on his face. You can't talk to me, no one. You yeah, said you would give us a fight, bro. I don't want to talk to you. Where's my gun, though? Where my gun at, you owe me? You promised me a gun. Where my gun at? You promised me a gun. Where my gun at? You don't even really got a name. You promised me a gun. Where my gun at? Who know you? Who know you? Where my gun at? Pyro motherfuckers know me. Who know you? Where my gun at? You promised me a gun. Where my gun at? We took it already. Lying, lying, pants on fire. Lying, lying, pants on fire. Oh, Diddy should have took the glove. Oh, Diddy should have took. Hold on, bro. So we finna just move from them live, bro. Hey, so back. Hey, back. Mark, you don't move right so now. So you ain't have one of these. Fuck off that ass. Fuck off that ass. Mark, you right now. You ain't have one of these. Glizzy and Mark is from over there. On smooth, on Kevin. Hey, back. Okay. On Kevin. On smooth, they from over there. They got Mark, you know. Hey, fuck all that. I just want to merch. Hey, I just want to hit you merch on part where you ain't have no drink on. We're supposed to pop that ass. When folks caught that ass murky right now, you ain't had no Draco on you in your book bag, and you could get to it. Oh, smooth back. that ass dance Draco. between oh, the cars. Oh, smooth back. Oh, smooth back. that ass. Draco on me. Oh, Kevin ain't had no Draco on me. No, you talk. I'm talking about you and me knowing you. What, what I do to people on Kevin Gray? What I what do, I to, do people? to people? No, no. What you what you did once before on Pyro? How many funerals did it been on Pyro? Stop that. You better slow down, baby boy. <laughs> hey, fast though, you could be folks. You can't talk that talk with me before we go talk to talk, folks. You better slow your road, baby. Boy. Hey, back. Oh, oh. Hey, back. I bet you, I bet you, I bet you can't no nigga walk on this earth and say they put me down with a chopper or with a gun on me, folks. And oh, my shots ain't go off. My okay. shots go off every time, little nigga. On my son, nigga, we was the alley away. What the fuck? On you my son. What? And we, and on Pyro, some merchant on Vine, we ain't chase him down. On Kevin Gray. He, he know his hood. Pocket Town and 800 is still somewhat beefing. 
800 mocked L.A. Glizzy slash Liland after he was killed in early 2021. Another detail in the IG livestream, is that it ends with them setting up a shootout on 82nd and Maryland, and a shooting does actually occur a few blocks from there minutes later. However, I think the beef has kind of died down since both Lil Fats and Lil Twan got locked up, and will most likely never experience the free world again. In addition, Pocket Town is most focused on the beef with NLMB, Drill City and GMEBE and also has a RICO case going on in the middle of all this that we will come to a little later. But before we get to all that, we need to talk about the year 2020, a very bad year for Pocket Town who lost several members. Twenty twenty was a very tough year for Pocket Town and Sircon City. Sircon had just lost high speed vert by the end of twenty nineteen. He was killed in the eleven thousand three hundred block of South Purnell Avenue, which is Rookieville territory. So my guess is that it was not Pocket Town nor Moose Block who got him. In early May twenty twenty, Pocket Town lost their first member of the year, Greasy from Zolan slash Pocket Town. Greasy, whose nickname was Eric Chapman Jr was killed out west after arguing with an unknown offender who pulled out a gun and killed him, which indicates that it was not enemies who got him. Just a month later, Pocket Town lost another member, Big Gang, also known as Big Glizzy or Big Slide, he was shot along with three others at a house party in Robbins, Illinois. Big Gang, whose real name was James Barnes, was tragically pronounced dead at Ingalls Memorial Hospital in Harvey a short time later while the other three wounded victims fortunately survived. It has previously been speculated about whether Big Gang was backdoored, but it seems to be false. To my knowledge he was caught in a crossfire, and that he was not the intended target. What I also heard is that he died in the midst of saving a girl at the party, telling her to get out of the way as soon as the shots started to ring out, he died a hero. Big Gang was a very important member of Pocket Town, he was the older brother of Mello and the cousin of Lil Art. Two days later, it was Sircon City who lost a member, Lil Cine, also known as the Bully. There are two different theories about who killed Lil Cine, but regardless, everything points to it being internal. Lil Cine had beef for unknown reasons with several people within Sircon City, one of them DJ. Just hours before the murder, Lil Cine had mocked Big Glizzy from Pocket Town, which I just told you about. It is speculated that TJ gave away Lil Cine's location to Pocket Town, and that Rio G from KTS slash Pocket Town slid and killed him. Rio G heavily mocked Lil Cine after the murder even posted a story where he wrote, I did that. But I ain't gone say too much. However, some believe that Rio G was falsely claiming, and that it really was someone within Sircon City who did it. After the assassination, Sircon City split, Sin City was created to honor Lil Cine. It's currently two camps within Sircon City, one camp on Lil Cine's side while the other's on TJ's side. Almost exactly one month it turned again in the other direction, KTS slash Pocket Town lost a member, and not just any member, but the younger brother to Lil Lay, King Rico and Lady Shaw, namely Rio G who I just mentioned in the last slide. Rio G was sitting in a vehicle at a gas station in the 7000 block of South Domin Avenue with three other men, 
a 37-year-old man, a 14-year-old boy and a 16-year-old boy. Suddenly, a silver SUV pulled up which contained three people, one driver, and two shooters who hopped out and started shooting into the other car. Rio G, 24 years old, was shot multiple times and was later pronounced dead at the hospital. The two younger boys who got hit fortunately survived after catching bullets in the back and right arm respectively. The 37-year-old man was not wounded. There are basically two theories about who was behind the murder of Rio G. The first theory is that it was Sircon City Gangsters which is based on that Sircon City took revenge for the murder of Lil Sinny, who was shot dead a month earlier, however it is unknown if Rio G was actually behind that murder. I haven't heard any names from Sircon that may have been involved in the murder of Rio, but there are many indications that it was shorties that did it if that was the case, because Sircon has plenty of them who put in a lot of work, Lil Fred for example. The second theory about who was behind the murder of Rio G, is that it was NLMB, which to me personally sounds more likely for several reasons. Lil Down and other Pocket Town members have repeatedly indicated that Rio G was NLMB's work, while several No Limit members have mocked Rio G heavily and claimed him as their work. Lil Down from Pocket Town even wrote, Long live Rio G on January 28, 2022 which marked one year since Lil Greg was killed. Several NLMB member wrote paragraphs about Lil Greg which made Lil Don respond with mockery in the message honoring Rio G which indicates that NLMB was responsible for Rio G. There is of course a chance that NLMB is falsely claiming Rio G, but I have not seen anyone from Pocket Town deny that No Limit was behind it. The members from No Limit that I have heard are behind the murder are Pharaoh and Lil Loss from No Limit, who are also part of the small group of No Limit's absolute top members called Drench Gang. This was Faro's second alleged body because it is rumored that he also caught Mook from death row in the summer of 2019. However, there is an interesting theory behind why Pharaoh allegedly got Rio G out of the way, which I think no one has heard of before. The motive for the murder of Rio G is apparently about a murder that Rio G was involved in nine years earlier, in the summer of 2011. On the 2nd of June 2011, it is rumored that Rio G was involved in the murder of a man named Randall Cummins. Randall, 26, also known as Lil Black or Boss Blizz, was a member of Money Mafia slash NLMB, just as Simo was. Now you are probably wondering what connection Lil Black has to Drench Gang Pharaoh, and the answer to that is that Pharaoh is one of two children Lil Black left behind after his death. This theory is very unknown and I really want to clarify that these are just rumors. This is probably the motive for why Pharaoh, only 16 years old at the time, went after Rio G. Then there are of course several other motives, Rio G was involved in several other shootings and murders of No Limit and Sircon City members which certainly played a role in why he was killed. Pharaoh has mocked Rio G multiple times in both songs and on stories, for example, in the song Real Facts, Pharaoh rapped, Rio got hit and they left his ass twitching, and, Rio got hit and y'all ain't get your get back.
was in his prime, you niggas wasn't around. For the Instagram, yeah, my city going down. The nightmare continued for Pocket Town after the murder of Rio G. Only two months later, they lost K Dog, also known as Kivo. K Dog, whose real name was Kevin Forbes, 28 was shot and killed in the 6900 block of South Woodlawn Avenue which is Pocket Town territory. What I heard was K-Dog with Spook and Lil Ra when he was killed. Both of them supposedly froze up when the shots started to ring off. There is much to suggest that Sirkhan City was responsible for the murder because the next day, an innocent man by the name of Jeffrey was killed in the 1400 block of East 73rd Street, which is Sirkhan territory. A black SUV pulled up and an unknown offender started shooting at Jeffrey and his friend. His friend, who Jeffrey apparently tried to get out of the way, which most likely saved his life, fortunately survived the shooting but Jeffrey was tragically pronounced dead at the hospital shortly after the shooting. Only a week later, an actual member from Sirkhan City, Big Doo-Wop, also known as Big Dookie, who was a member from Sirkhan City, but also Mixed Mob, was killed. Duwap was actually killed in mixed mob territory on the 1400 block of East 79th Street. He was sitting in a car with a 26-year-old woman when a white SUV pulled up and two men started shooting. The 26-year-old woman was also shot and fortunately survived. Duwap, who was pronounced dead at the hospital, was mocked by several Pocket Town members, including Denny G, who wrote several disrespectful things about him on Instagram. However, some believe that it was not Pocket Town who was behind the murder of Big Doo Wop, and that it was Busy from Hood Gang who killed him. One month later, Pocket Town lost another member, New 30. However, he was not killed in Chicago, he was killed in Michigan, Indiana. Police were called to a residence in the 200 block of First Street for reports of a person who had been shot and was not breathing. When police arrived, they found 26-year-old Nuke 30, whose real name was Micah Garrett, deceased in the home. During the investigation, detectives identified a person of interest, but the investigation is ongoing. Police said the incident was not a random act of violence. Nuke 30 was Pocket Town's fifth loss of the year, however, it should be said that the majority of them were not killed due to an active war with a main enemy. 2020 was truly a nightmare year for Pocket Town, and they were even close to losing another member when the outstanding member Lil Art was shot 16 times by the Drench Gang twins, Lil Ru and Twino from NLMB, fortunately he survived.
Now we've really gotten to the main part of this story, and it's of course the murder of Lil Greg from NLMB that would directly escalate the violence on the east side of Chicago. On January 28, 2021, Lil Greg was sitting in a barber shop on 1931 South State Street in the South Loop which is approximately a 20 minute drive away from No Limits Hood. While Lil Greg sat in the barber shop, a 2010 Volvo SUV pulled up outside the shop, one man jumped out of the vehicle, walked right into the barber shop and shot Lil Greg point blank in the head. The gunman fled out of the barber shop and hopped back into the Volvo which was seen speeding away from the scene. However, Shortly after the murder, the Volvo SUV was pulled over by police. Behind the wheel sat a man by the name of Christopher Mosley, also known as CK from Pocket Town. CK was immediately arrested, but not for the murder, but because the police found a semi-automatic Glock with a laser attachment in the knapsack he was wearing. While the gun was not loaded at the time of the arrest, CK was also carrying a drum magazine capable of holding a lot of rounds according to the prosecutors. According to the police, they would test if the weapon CK was arrested with match the weapon that was used in the murder of Lil Greg, however, it did not say in the article whether it matched or not, but my guess is that it did not, because CK is still locked up, but only for a gun charge which actually makes me believe he was not the shooter but only the driver. However, I have also heard from a person who claims to have seen the surveillance videos, that KT Estray was the shooter, and that he masked up, walked into the shop and shot Greg in the head, who apparently was sleeping in the chair. The source claimed to have recognized KT Estray due to his body type and movement pattern. However, I do not know if it is true and I have also heard that KT Estray was on house arrest at the time. But what I am pretty sure on is that CK was not the shooter and that either Lil Don or KT Estray was the alleged killer. The way KT Estray was killed may indicate that he was the shooter. Many people do not know this, but there is a reason why Lil Greg was killed. In addition, there is also a narrative that the war between Pocket Town and No Limit was Pocket Town's fault, that they are the bad guys and that people therefore chose G Herbo's and No Limit's side in the beef. The information I will now publish has never been published before. The real reason why Lil Greg was brutally murdered in broad daylight in a barber shop is because of a girl that both Greg and a member from Pocket Town were interested in. When Lil Greg walked into the barber shop that day, he spotted an unknown man together with the Pocket Town member who apparently was interested in the same girl as him. The tension was high in the barber shop and they both locked eyes with each other. Lil Greg immediately made a call to No Limit to get it confirmed that the man in the barber shop was an enemy, and that he wanted him gone. However, the people from No Limit he called said that the person in question was cool and that he was mostly known for making money, and that he was not involved in any conflict. According to the information I received, Lil Greg did not want to hear it, he was really pissed off about the girl, 
and therefore called up another part of no limit to get the green light to take him out right where he saw him, but received the same answer again from NLMB. From what I have heard, not even the pocket town member knew that they were interested in the same girl, nor that Greg had issues with him. Apparently, the pocket town member did not have a good idea of who Lil Greg actually was. However, I have a bit of a hard time believing that he did not know who Lil Greg was due to the fact that Greg is a well-known No Limit member and is featured in several of G Herbo's music videos. According to the information I have received, the man who accompanied the member from Pocket Town peeped the tension between his friend and Lil Greg when they locked eyes, and therefore made a phone call himself to his people to let them know who he had just seen and where they were located apparently not with the intentions to get Lil Greg killed, but rather warn them in case anything was about to go down. However, who actually made the call is a bit divided, some say it was the Pocket Town member who made the call to his people, to let them know he could be in danger and where they were located, while others say it was his friend. Regardless of which is true, it was through that phone call Pocket Town got the information about Lil Greg's whereabouts. A little while later, the Pocket Town member and his friend left the barbershop, which is probably the reason why Lil Greg chose to stay, he probably thought that nothing would happen and that he was safe, which he was not. Both the Pocket Town member and Lil Greg were known for getting money in the city, neither of them was known for being shooters or killers, which is the reason why nothing happened between them on the spot. Both had to call their people, Lil Greg with the purpose of getting the green light and the Pocket Town member killed while the Pocket Town member and his friend had the purpose of letting their people know they could be in danger and warn them in case something would happen. You have to remember that the Pocket Town member had no idea that he and Greg were interested in the same girl, he barely knew about Greg since he was strictly a Pocket Town member, and was not involved at all in any conflict with No Limit. Many people probably wonder why I do not disclose the name of the Pocket Town member who unknowingly had issues with Lil Greg, and there are several reasons for that. This also has connections to why Cairo did an interview with 16 Shot M Visuals, where he accused G Herbo of not being a real gangster and that he turned his back on the gang. The Pocket Town member has been subjected to one or two attempted murders after the murder of Lil Greg where he has been shot at. By the way, the Pocket Town member was one of Spook's best friends. No Limit is basically angry at the whole situation and how everything backfired for Lil Greg, and the reason why Cairo went out to the public and talked down G Herbo, is because Herbo allegedly put money on the Pocket Town member Greg saw in the barbershop. However, word on the street and within No Limit was that G Herbo in reality was never going to pay, and that he was just using his name and celebrity to get street credit. This in connection with G Herbo not bailing out Mali from No Limit is the reason why Cairo and several other No Limit members called out Herbo's supposed lies. However, G Herbo has recently been seen with outstanding drench gang members like Pharaoh in Los Angeles, who by the way had expensive clothes and watches, which makes me believe that G Herbo actually listened to what Cairo and other members said and started paying. It is also rumored that Lil Don has a large sum of money on his head. I believe the Pocket Town member Greg saw in the barbershop and Lil Don are the two people on top of the list for Drench Gang. I just wanted to point out that Cairo may have trolled in the interview, it may well be that G Herbo put out a hit on the Pocket Town member for real, and that Cairo talked down Herb to keep him out of potential police investigations or RICO cases. It's actually hard to tell if he is serious or not. But according to the sources from both sides I have talked to, Cairo is serious. However, I feel a little sorry for the Pocket Town member, who presumably did not have a clue of Lil Greg's issues with him, and that he did not drop his location with the intentions to get Greg killed, which was Lil Greg's intentions with the Pocket Town member, and now he has money on his head and the whole drench gang after him.
The consequences after the murder of Lil Greg were horrific. Lil Greg was one of the original members from the Mad Max, Crazy James, Cairo, Mineski, Mally, G Herbo and Lil Bibby generation. He was close with all of them. To my knowledge, Greg was not an outstanding member in terms of putting in work, but he was very much loved, not least by G Herbo who was close to him. What is also sad is that Lil Greg left two children behind, who now have to grow up without their father. The anger, irritation and frustration were really big within NLMB after they got the news of Greg's death, they were mad over how it all played out, that everything backfired on on Greg, and that Lil Greg really did not deserve it since he was not an active shooter nor a killer and wasn't seen as a target. All the mockery, not least from Lil Don, after the murder did not make things better either. As I mentioned at the beginning, the consequences would be horrific. Lil Don from Pocket Town, who I highly suspect to be Lil Greg's killer, was not shy about giving out hints about him being the alleged killer. Also, KT Stray actually uploaded a story the day Lil Greg was killed with the text, We don't claim shit we ain't do, which makes me believe he wasn't the killer despite the rumors. Lil Don has literally over a dozen self-incriminating posts on social media. In December 2021, Lil Don uploaded an Instagram story where he said, Why they acting like Greg wasn't the biggest score of 2021, that shit got a lot of hoods mad and clicking up, and, anything that happened after, just remember he went first. He also mentioned CK in the story, saying that they should free him and giving respect to him for staying solid. After the murder of Lil Greg, Lil Don has had it tough, he has been shot several times on two different occasions, both times in the shoulder. The last time he was shot was on October 24th, 2021. He was shot at around 20 times, but only hit twice from a .223, which is ammunition that is often used in rifles which Lil Don later confirmed in an Instagram story. In Lil Don's latest song Certified, he mentions the incident and also says that the person who shot him is dead, and I highly suspect that Do V4 from Face World 079 was that person. Do V4 was shot and killed by Lil Fats and Tuan from 800 a month after Lil Don was shot and Lil Don did not hold back with the mockery. He posted several stories mocking Doovy 4, saying several disrespectful things and also stated that Doovy used to give out locations of Pocket Town members to NLMB. However, who shot Lil Don the first time is more unclear and I actually do not think it was NLMB. According to rumors that I have heard, NLMB slash Drench Gang Shorties are teaming up with Shorties from Drill City and GMEBE to go against Pocket Town and K. DS. This means that it is not only NLMB that is out looking for Pocket Town members. However, Cairo from No Limit made it clear that they are after Lil Dawn in a paragraph about Lil Greg. In the last sentence of the largely incriminating text, Cairo wrote, Don't worry, we're coming to get you too which I highly believe is intended for Lil Don. However, it could also be intended for the Pocket Town member Lil Greg saw in the barber shop.
They got his stupid ass rapper for the poster boy. He can't even stand up. Look at Chubbs. <laughs> dead ass dummy. Look at you. Dead right now trying to kick it with a boy. Now back to the timeline. After the murder of Lil Greg, the police issued safety alerts to the public that revenge can play out due to the murder of Lil Greg. And believe me, the police and not least the FBI have a good view of NLMB, much because of the beef with Black Mob and the murder of Shooter Shells. But I'm pretty positive that the FBI has been closely following the course of events between Pocket Town and No Limits since the murder of Lil Greg. They knew that things were about to go down, which would show when nine members of Pocket Town got picked up by the FBI which we come to a little later in the story. There was a lot of shootings back and forth after the murder of Greg, there was shootings on Black Mob, NLMB and MTG shot at each other on the same day, NLMB shot up No Limit 083, and Lil Loss even said that 83rd should hang it up, and of course, no Limit shot up Pocket Town and slid through their blocks several times, looking to get revenge. However, it was two months of back-to-back -back sliding without success until they finally got their revenge. Pocket Town were on full alert all the time, a few stayed on other blocks and others stayed indoors as much as possible. However, in late March 2021, just two months after the murder of Lil Greg, No Limit got their revenge. On March 26, 2021, Pocket Town held a gathering to celebrate Kivo's birthday who was shot and killed in late September, 2020, which I told you about earlier. The gathering was held in the 2500 block of West 79th Street, which is close to the territories of Stain City and BBG. The party was mostly members but also family, friends and not least children. At first, the party was successful. Everyone was happy, celebrating Kivo's memory, good food and drinks. Denny G from Pocket Town uploaded stories on Instagram from the party where everyone had a good time, dancing to music and whatnot. However, just hours later, everything would change. The initially happy party would basically turn into a war zone with bullets whistling in the air. At the party were, among others, Killa Spook, Denny G, Lord, Mexico and Rella from Pocket Town, all top tier members of Pocket Town. At around 12.10 am, a car pulled up outside the party, at least two people got out of the car and started shooting up the party. The bullets whistled in the air as people at the party ducked, ran, and tried to take cover in panic. Kenneth, 50, who lives near where the shooting occurred, said he was awakened by what sounded like automatic gunfire for two or three minutes. He dropped to the ground, even though his house was made of brick. He was not sure where the shots were coming from. Kenneth, who is a Marine veteran, said it felt like I was back in the desert storm. Eight people in total were shot at the party where over 100 spent shell casings were found all over the place. One of the eight people who was shot by the hail of gunfire was sadly fatally hit in the head. That person was Killa Spook, the leader of Pocket Town. Yeah, it's a big thing, shit,
Among those injured were people like Danny G, Lord, Choke, Petty, Jojo and a member named Martinez, also known as Mount Larry, who was actually arrested after the shooting for unlawful use of a weapon since he was one of the people who was shooting back along with Danny G, Rello in Mexico. Larry was charged after he was found laying on top of a 9mm gun in the back seat of a Dodge Charger in the 8200 block of South Domin Avenue that was seen leaving the scene. Larry suffered from a gunshot wound to his leg and was taken into custody after being hospitalized at Christ Medical Center in Oak Town. According to police, several handguns were found at the scene of the shooting, however, they could not be linked to anyone. Most of the wounded members got hit multiple times in the mass shooting, unfortunately for Pocket Town, one of the members who got shot only once, was fatally hit, and that man was Spook who was shot in the head. Lord from OPTG, who also was shot in the head, fought for his life during surgery for several days at the hospital. Many thought that he would not survive and that he had died, but fortunately he survived and from what I have heard he is now discharged from the hospital. Denny G had to spend several days in the hospital after the shooting, he was shot in the back and the doctors could not take the bullet out since it was lodged by his tailbone. Denny G said on his Facebook page after the shooting that he was just ready to go. Now to another mass shooting in Chicago. Our cameras were there as police found one of the guns used during that attack in Wrightwood. It left one person dead, seven others injured. And the moment shots were fired, all caught on camera. CBS. This place is a problem. That's what a woman who asked to remain anonymous said about 2515 West 79th Street in Wrightwood. They do a lot of um, arguing and, and, you know, fighting and stuff like that, but they don't let you that never says she doesn't know much about the business but says there are parties there regularly the pocket town member mt larry i just mentioned was also charged in a covid 19 loan fraud included in that case were also two u.s army soldiers brandon miller and jarius brunson stationed at fort campbell along the tennessee kentucky border 
What's interesting about the U.S. Army soldiers Brandon Miller and Jarius Brunson, is that they are currently facing federal conspiracy charges in connection with an alleged gun-running operation, masterminded by Brandon, Jarius and one other U.S. Army soldier, Demarcus Adams. What is interesting about this is that Pocket Town is also involved in these federal charges, because they are the gang that received the weapons and supplied them to members of Pocket Town. The 21-count indictment, unsealed in federal court in Nashville, charges the soldiers and nine gang members of Pocket Town with conspiracy, money laundering conspiracy and conspiracy to commit firearms offenses in furtherance of a drug trafficking crime. The nine members from Pocket Town who were arrested and are now facing federal charges are Rello, Dresky, EJ, Lil Ra, Corey Got Clout, Pac Migo, Dreadhead Larry and two others named White and Lazarus who I am not familiar with. Every single one of these members are older and outstanding members of Pocket Town. Pac Migo, Lil Ra and Corey Got Clout are all three rappers, but as you probably guessed, rapping was not their only gig. Dreadhead Larry, who is also facing charges, is one of Pocket Town originals. He's the cousin of Spook and is one of King Rico's best friends. Rello, Dresky, EJ and Lil Ra are all very well-known members with bodies under their belts, allegedly. announcing a superseding indictment charging 12 individuals in a conspiracy to illegally traffic over 90 guns across state lines into the city of Chicago. What triggered this whole investigation by the FBI was the mass shooting where Spook was killed and several other top members shot. An interesting detail is that if Spook had survived, he too would have faced federal charges along with one other man who was also killed before the investigation began. However, he was shot and killed on another occasion. After further investigation, it turned out that the pistol that was found in connection with the arrest of CK from Pocket Town after the murder of Lil Greg, a .40 caliber Glock 23 pistol with a laser sight and drum magazine of ammunition, was bought by the U.S. Army soldier, Brandon Miller, from a licensed gun dealer in Kentucky less than a month before police found it on CK. A search of cell phones belonging to the soldiers revealed text messages that show the three soldiers discussing the prices of firearms, how many were to be purchased and from where. These three people really supplied Pocket Town with heavy artillery and I'm sure there are more similar gun running pipelines in Chicago. Everything really went wrong for Pocket Town, eight members shot which left their leader dead, and because of that mass shooting. The FBI managed to expose their gun-running pipeline which resulted in nine of Pocket Town's top members facing federal charges. I guess this gun-running business has been going on for at least seven years since in April 2015. Both Spook and Pac Migo got locked up for guns that were reported stolen from Tennessee. In the weeks leading up to the mass shooting, police sources said that there was an emerging conflict between Pocket Town and No Limit due to the murder of G. Herbo's close friend Lil Greg less than two months earlier. 
No one has been arrested in connection with the murder of Spook and the seven other attempted murders. However, police sources said the suspected shooters are linked to the No Limit faction of Black P. Stones. Already in early November 2021, in the story of No Limit Mad Max, I told about one person who I heard supposedly was involved in the mass shooting, that person is Pharaoh from No Limit that I told about earlier, and who was allegedly involved in the murder of Rio G from KTS and Mook from Death Row. This was Pharaoh's third alleged body at the time, only at the age of 17. However, Pharaoh was not the only alleged shooter, there was at least one more. I have been confirmed by one of my sources that Pharaoh was one of the alleged shooters with at least one other member from NLMB along with a member from GMEBE who was clicked up with NLMB. The names I have heard are the twins Twino and Lilro from No Limit slash Drench Gang, and Emo from MBGMEBE Roblox. In Faro's song Switch Glocks and Choppas, he even rapped, Catch me on EA, Lil Emo with me, he got that Mac tucked. Keep in mind, take this information with a grain of salt, it's not facts, only rumors. How No Limit and GMEBE actually got the location where the party was held, is most likely due to an unknown woman who dropped the location to No Limit. Both No Limit and Pocket Town have hinted about this information. In the song Locked In by G Herbo, which he dropped on February 4th, 2022, one year after Lil Greg was killed, he rapped, We make women drop lows in they texting lock codes, along with the lines, we could not wait to bust on him. Took years, he had luck though, but F buddy, he cutthroat, me and phone him cutthroats, we ain't waiting on no get back, so his bro nem must go which is most likely aimed at both Spook and KTS Trey who we will come to later. In an Instagram story, Lil Don from Pocket Town wrote, We catch that girl who dropped that low, we gon' make her feel it, ain't nowhere you can hide, I hope they paid you a million. Pharaoh and several other members from No Limit have mocked Spook several times after the mass shooting, G. Caro posted a story with the text, It's spooky outside, and Jock posted a story with the message, Nah, don't cry now, long live Greg. Twino from Drench Gang made several posts on his Facebook page including one post where he wrote, It's not even summertime and we make people melt. On January 28, 2022, the one-year mark for the murder of Lil Greg, several No Limit members posted stories with mockery towards Pocket Town and KTS. Pharaoh posted a picture of Lil Greg with the text, I love you big bro, we made people regret ever putting their hands on you, for real. He also posted another story with the text, 
you got a lot of company up there, and got more coming. Cairo also posted a few stories with long paragraphs, among other things, Cairo wrote, people talking all that funny shit but they know we make shit very scary, on my dead homie, we have fed up a lot of happy homes and blocks for you. EBK Juviju posted a story with the text, I remember the ops were making posts saying they want to die soon when their daddy spook died lol Lil Don from Pocket Town actually responded to all of these posts with his own stories where he wrote, why is everybody writing paragraphs, don't cry now, be gangster, it's bodies on both sides, talk some funny shit today or is it hurting that bad. However, there would be consequences for no limit after the murder of Spook. The same day that Spook was pronounced dead, Pocket Town allegedly slid on no limit, Drill City and GMEBE. A 32-year-old man was even shot on no limits block directly after Spook was killed. The next day, once again, shots rang off on no limits blocks and this was repeated throughout the month of April 2021. A person was shot on no limit on April 7th, shots rang off again the next day. April 11th, 14, 20, 25 and 28 are all dates when shots rank off on no limit the month after Spook was killed. However, it does not have to be Pocket Town or KTS that was behind the shootings, it may be under other circumstances but April really stood out compared to other months before Spook was killed which says a lot. It is also rumored that Lil Don shot Moo Wop from No Limit shortly after Spook's death. Twino from Drench Gang and Marco from NLMB are two others who have been rumored to have been shot after Spook. The shootings continued towards no limit later in the summer and throughout June, however, in early July 2021, no limit would score again, and they would score big. On April 27, 2020, KTS Trey got arrested and charged with unlawful use of weapon, aggravated assault with a weapon, a warrant that was issued due to a parole violation. Dre remained locked up during large parts of 2020 before he was later released at the end of 2020 in November. What is unclear here is whether he was put on house arrest or if he had been fitted with an ankle bracelet. Why I wonder this is because it plays a big role in the speculation around whether KTS Dre or Lil Don was the killer of Lil Greg just three months after KTS Dre was released. Just as I mentioned earlier, I have heard that it was either KTS Dre or Lil Don. Anyways, in either late May or late June 2021, KTS Stray was arrested yet again, 
most likely for violating his conditions for his charges from 2020. I have seen some people, including news sites, reporting that Dre had been locked up since his arrest in late April 2020 until his release and death in July 2021. This is false. Just four days before the murder of Lil Greg, KTS Dre was on IG Live arguing with people from No Limit, and also posted several stories from December 2020 until May 2021. I just wanted to clarify it in case you got confused by the news site reporting. On July 10th, 2021, KTS Dre would be released from jail after a 60-year-old woman had posted his $5,000 bond. As many of you already know, KTS Dre did not have time to be out in the free world for long before his life would tragically end. Trying to be like that every day, bro. Well, hey, let's stop it, G. Why you on hey, that line, answer bro? this one question. I'm asking you a question. Line, bro. I'm asking your question. You, you answer my one serious, question. Hey, no, we didn't want to, bitch ass niggas. You see, we made y'all pitch Chill out. We made y'all pitch out. We ain't want nothing to do with y'all. You see what we did? Hey, you know when we divided, you bitch ass nigga. You know what I told y'all whole ass niggas. Baby, baby, you run in the streets, but don't do that. Bro, get on here. You know like what? You hey, back I can't bro. really talk to your goofy ass because you yeah, don't listen. Don't get on That's your like problem. You That's why we like really divided because your goofy ass don't listen, nigga. Who the fuck? I'm you know what's to? going on, bro. You know I never said. To listen, listen, no, I, I never I listen, fam. I never said I was in those streets, nigga. But you know what's up with me, nigga. You know no, when it was time I to go. Don't, bro. Hey, once I, I thought question. I was beating hey, hey, you know, when it was time, time to go, who was right there? Was no hey, more. when it was time you know, to go, who was right there? Hey, when it was time to go, who was right there? Hey, when it was time to go, who was right there? Every day, we were answer that question. Down, answer that question. You was right there. You was my son. When it was time to go, who was right there though? Answer this though. Yeah, right there, nigga. Neck, right yeah. You remember what I'm talking about, nigga? What you asking? I can't really talk on here, but you know what I'm talking about, nigga. I know you can't say it on here because you want to make them niggas story look good, baby. You bogus, bro. You well, bogus. stop it. Hey, it's Jay. okay, though, sweaty. You hear me? Jay, you can't look. be right here. What up, Lil G? What's up, little girl? I see that. They just sent me that page. But you want to do sneak this on me. Who sneak this? That you and you and that you and that video goofy. Man, I don't even think about niggas. You just sit on the. I'm live. talking about that tip. Bro, that, that, it don't matter that what free I, bed look, cash look, shit, man. It don't matter what I say. Why I you can't. always look. gotta talk over a well, look, listen, well, listen, listen, You know listen. we used to talk on the phone all the time. I know, but look, you this. just sit on live. Let the fans goofy. on here for you. Ain't gotta do all that extra. Go Let's ahead. Get, let's talk like Go regular ahead, niggas. Man. Let's talk like regular niggas, folks. Don't do it. Look, I'm only standing over here for like three minutes, then. Man, After I this, don't give a fuck what you listen, doing, man. What you listen, doing, man? no, listen. Then I'm gonna call you another day, and we gonna talk for like two hours and state real facts. After this shit, this on my homies on cut though gang on my the whole gang. Every last one, I'm on no gangster shit, no gangster shit about you. Why you just not like that? I personally don't know no gangster shit. So you ain't, I right, if you ain't never, all right, so look, check out. You ain't that's never that's heard no gangster shit about me and nothing, 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 nothing at all. No, don't do that. Stop cutting me off. You just said on live. I want to hear. I want to hear. Cause you, you just, just laughed. You just said on live and told a nigga, let a nigga tell you, you ready to expose Goofy dude, man? How he be running and doing this and doing this? How he be running for y'all? How y'all used to chase him? When y'all ever chase me? Who ever chased me? Who ever chased me, bro? You you over east? Fuck the internet. The whole east side gonna hit it. Who ever chased me, nigga? On Saturday night. What did niggas want from me? What did niggas want from me? You did get chased. Who chased me? You chased shit before and you got so ass chased too. I chased unlimited shit. But listen though, you got so ass chased too and you ran a lot of times. Now who? For you not Superman, bro. On what you never ran. On what you never ran from us, period. Stamp that. Put that. Put that on your brother. Anything you never ran from us, uh, and, ran and no, and no, ran from and you. no, and no, in no situations you never ran from nobody from no limit, folks. I don't know. Hey, look, this is what I. Who you run? You? Hey, I look, said, look, put look, it on your brother that you, you never ran from no limit. Hey, no I'm saying my brother. I'm saying my brother. You don't get to say you. Ain't I'm just saying. saying my well, I'm. I'm not. But boy, look, this what on, I'm bro. saying. This what I'm saying. Why you, you still ever, ain't stamping yet? Why you still ain't? You put it on rock. I ever ran from you. Put it on anybody that you no, never ran from. Put it on from one us. of your homies I ever ran from you. You ain't had to run from me. Okay, put it on your homies I ever ran from the other nigga who got on live and said I've been running from y'all all the time. Why are you going around this shit? Why are you going around this shit? Let's keep it real. I'm known for running. That's what I'm known I'm for. I'm just saying, why you saying you never ran from none of us, period? 
and look, I don't know who I ran from. You know, I've been times I'd have been on Sunday night for a little weird shit that happened. I probably did have to run, but not from an individual, not from you. It don't matter. You ran a lot of times. That's why I'm a telling lot of you. Times you, ran. you ran a lot of times. From who? I just said, have I ever ran from you? Have you ran from me before? Hell no. Nah. On what? I never oh, ran what? from you. I only said you one time. I only said you one time in person. And that was that day, and I ain't even run that day. Hey, you hear me? You lucky we don't lie. You ain't never right, ran listen, for me. Listen, 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 listen. Hey, y'all ain't all ran for me at once. Hey, hey, look, hey, look. You ain't never ran for me a lot of times in your life. Like, y'all ain't never had to run a lot of times because of me. Like, all the time. Like, unlimited uh times. Like, come on. Hey, right, listen. I'm going like, to ask you this quick. I ain't make niggas run. No, listen, I'm listen, listen. Run, bro. Like, who, 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 Hold on. Look, 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 look. Name I'm finna ask you one more time, run. bro. I'm finna ask you one more time. What the fuck is you talking so about? You never... Name a block I ain't make niggas run on since we gonna speak facts over east. I'm, I'm finna ask you one more time. I'm finna ask you one more time, bro. Did you stop oh. talking over me, man? Oh, what up? So you never heard my name and no gangster shit with your homies or any of your homies? I want you to no. put it on any nigga. I ain't gonna lie to you. Listen to me. No, folks. If you get, if you did anything, you got away with it, folks. We do not be thinking that, but we think you. Oh what? Look, listen. We think you. I am finna get, get, get out. I'm finna get out. I'm finna get out. You just lied. You just stunning. You just no, told Flock when Flock just was on your lab. You just said if Flock just told you he get out. You just said, oh yeah, that's little bro though. No, Why I didn't. I, said, but I also said he's not on shit. I don't want you just saying that. I told Flock that boy, go watch that shit, boy. I said you want no shit, boy. You I'm tweet, gone, he man. said you get out. I'm gone, I'm gone, bro. 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 i am gone bro i am gone bro i am gone was that a white BMW and a black Infinity waited outside the prison walls? As soon as KTS Stray had walked outside of the gates and across the street to the 2700 block of West 27th Street, four or five men, who had been waiting to ambush Stray, popped out the cut and began to literally empty their magazine towards KTS Stray. A hail of gunfire hit Dre who instantly fell to the ground where he was struck by another hail of gunfire. Multiple bullets per second came flying towards Dre as he was laying bloody on the ground. Switches were most likely used by the shooters. According to police, KTS Dre, whose real name was Loner Sylvester, suffered from 64 bullet wounds all over his body, with 10 of them striking him in his face. However, I do not believe Dre was hit with 64 bullets, the police are most likely including both the entry wounds and the exiting wounds which suggests that Dre was shot around 32 times. Police recovered 59 spent shell casings on the scene and I doubt all of them hit Dre. The 60 year old woman who was walking with Dre was shot in the knee, fortunately she survived and was listed in good condition at Stroger Hospital. The 35 year old social worker was also wounded in the shooting, she was grazed by a bullet to her face. She too was said to be in good condition. London Sylvester, only 31 years old, was pronounced dead at Mount Sinai Hospital in less than half an hour after the shooting. The scene was really a nightmare and I cannot even imagine the trauma for the two women who had to witness it. There was blood and bullets everywhere. My thoughts is mostly with Katie Estre's mother, who has now lost two of her sons, Katie Estre and Katie S. Vaughn, and their father, Vinnie to gun violence. I hope she can find peace somehow despite all the horrors. His mother, made a post a couple of weeks after the murder with the text, it's sad I cannot give my son a funeral, not because of money, but because of the lack of respect people have for dead people.
Another person shot, 2600, South California, 45 male shot victim who was just released. Fire is en route. The members who allegedly killed Katie Estray, according to what I have heard, were Pharaoh, Lil Hot, Moo Wop, Cairo and Merch Money, all top members of Drench Gang slash NLMB. All five have made self-incriminating comments since the hit went down in July last year, both in songs and in IG stories. There is so much self-incriminating material, mainly from No Limit Pharaoh. It's actually one of those murders where members have self-snitched the most, at least from what I've seen. We start with Pharaoh. In the song Switch Glocks and Choppas, which is a remix of Lil Durk's song Hellcats and Trackhawks, Pharaoh started at the song by rapping, Jump Out Gang, We Pop Out With Sticks, All The Apas Was Just Laughing Until Dude Got Hit, Ain't Seen Another Laugh Or Joke Since He Got His Shit Split. Pharaoh have also posted a lot of Facebook and Instagram, only six days after the murder, No Limit Muwap wrote, Gage Way or Gun Play, which Pharaoh answered with, Lots of Gun Play. Pharaoh later posted stories with the following messages, dissing No Limit in them raps not gone end good, you people should know by now, and, ops my target practice, I ain't never been in no range. Pharaoh also posted a picture of him and No Limit Cairo with the caption, You know once we put a dude on mute, they will never be able to talk again. There are several other stories from Pharaoh and I will just let them speak for itself. Muwap from Drench Gang, who was also one of the alleged killers, probably acted most reckless on social media after the murder among the alleged killers. The day after the murder, he posted stories saying things like, Keep your eyes open. Ain't no lacking homie, pack of the year, up that score, my ops be pressed when they lose, we call they phone like yes, play with no limit, that's a bad decision, no limit ain't do anything, we do not know anything, you can get that out your head, and was even trolling with no limit Cairo that they wanted to play Nintendo 64, referring to the amount of bullets Trey allegedly caught.
As many of you already know, Cairo had a personal conflict with KTS Dre, since Dre punched him in the face at the McDonald's restaurant, which was caught on camera by KTS Vaughn. This is a situation Cairo ironized after the murder of KTS Dre, he posted stories saying things like, My job been hurting all day, let me go in the house before somebody shoot at me, it's a lot of angry people outside, and even posted a picture of KTS Dre with the text, I miss you big bro. Cairo later also posted a picture of him and Drench Gang Pharaoh, giving him the award for being the savage of the year. This was actually very common in the years 2012 to 2013, to nominate the MVP in the streets for the year, which usually means that person put in a lot of work. Cairo was really ruthless on social media, he even posted a screenshot of the news article about KTS Dre with the caption, People are so sick, it's disturbing, nobody deserves this, and even answered a troll mocking him in direct messages. The troll sent a message basically saying what KTS Von said after Cairo got punched in the face at McDonald's, Damn, I think he just broke your jaw ill folks, Cairo responded to this message with, No, he bust my lip, tell him to come do it again. Lil Hot from Drench Gang, who was one of the alleged shooters, also wrote several self-incriminating posts on Facebook just days after the murder. Among other things, he made posts saying, DOA, OMG, somebody go help that guy, he was only out for 15 seconds, and, the guys cannot call my people the ops no more, which referring to that Lil Hot apparently have a lot of family from Lakeside. What's crazy is that even G Herbo, who otherwise usually stays quiet, made posts about this incident. He posted an IG story with the message, Better check the board, we up that score. G Herbo also mocked KTS Dre and Spook in the song Locked In which I talked about earlier, and he finished off the song with the line, I love revenge, that's a warm dish, no bad. There are a dozen other examples of self-incriminating comments and mockery towards KTS Dre, but I think it's best if I just let the pictures speak for themselves instead of lining up all the examples in the text. Damn! Damn hey, he's like he's a broke out John the phone.
KT Estray was truly an outstanding member and I am not surprised by all the mockery that came after his death. He had multiple bodies, he was really the one people thought KTS Von was, he was behind most of the work that has been linked to his brother. He was allegedly behind the murders of Rock and Alamo from NLMB in early 2012. He then got arrested but later released for the murder of Big Loss from NLMB, also in the year 2012. And as I told earlier in this video it is also rumored that he was the shooter in the murder of Lil Greg. However I believe it was Lil Dawn. Muwap from Drench Gang even stated that the killing of KTS Dre was personal which could refer to the rumor that Dre got Lil Greg. I'm sure he had more unknown bodies than those I just mentioned. KT Estray was also one disrespectful member, we all know what he did at McDonald's, basically embarrassed Cairo for the whole world to see, even though Cairo actually stood his ground and did not disrespect Rock. Dre used to mock Rock, Capo, Kobe, Mad Max and several other No Limit members all the time. No Limit really wanted him gone probably more than they wanted Von Gaughan since Dre actually put in more work. I do not actually think people understand how big the score actually was, mostly because people think Von put in all the work which was not the case. KTS is really out for revenge and they are mostly looking for Pharaoh and Cairo from Drench Gang. KTS have a lot of youngins coming up, all of them have bodies under their belt or have hurt a lot of people, and those are words from Michi from KTS. The get back may not come this year but as you all know, there is no expiration date on revenge. Pocket Town has a hard time sliding back right now since the police are watching them closely. A lot of their top members just got locked up, however, I'm sure Pocket Town will be recruiting a lot and get some reckless shorties to slide for them. Hey, now I'll figure out this shit over there. When I love, love. I'm gonna pop out. There's a game we don't talk. It is really infected between No Limit and Pocket Town. There have now been several murders in just a few years, and according to those I have talked to, Pocket Town is still up in NLMB and that No Limit only now after the murder of Lil Greg have started catching up by killing KTS Dre and Spook, and attempted murder of a dozen Pocket Town slash KTS members. Drench Gang is probably the wildest shorties in the city, and not only shorties, also people like Mali, Maneski and Wadema part part of Drench Gang. Drench Gang is basically an internal group within No Limit, and you can only claim it if you have caught a body. Even older members like Mali have been active in recent years, in late 2020, he got arrested and charged with the murder of GZ from MTG079 who was killed in mid-October 2020, most likely revenge for the murder of Capo from No Limit slash Glow Gang in 2015 who MTG was responsible for. However, the problem with these killing sprees the Trench Gang has carried out, especially the last two, a mass shooting and a brutal murder outside the prison is that they have all eyes on them from both the police and the FBI. No Limit has had the FBI's eyes on them even before the brutal murder of Shooter Shells and I'm pretty sure that No Limit, or at least Trench Gang, will be exposed to a RICO case against them sooner or later. Either a RICO case or that most of the outstanding members will get locked up for murders and get long sentences. You just cannot carry out killing sprees like this, the police have already stated that they know that there is a conflict between No Limit and Pocket Town. There have also been several shootings, attempted murders and even murders after the murder of KT Estray where innocent people have been shot. Just a few weeks ago there was a mass shooting near No Limit's hood where 8 people got shot. Pharaoh and Lil Lost from No Limit quickly went out on social media and stated that all of the people who got shot were innocent people. A couple of months ago, an innocent man got killed in Pocket Town territory which Lil Don from Pocket Town clowned the enemies for. Michi from KTS got shot at in February this year, 
There have basically been a whole lot of things going on between No Limit and Pocket Town slash KTS. It is rumored that No Limit had money on four people's heads from KTS slash Pocket Town, Killa Spook, KTS Trey, Lil Don and the Pocket Town member Lil Greg had issued with. Two of them are still alive and No Limit have hinted that they will catch them sooner or later. The story of Pocket Town is now over but as a small bonus chapter, I just wanted to develop my thoughts on the infected situation within No Limit. I'm talking of course about Cairo's interview with 16 Shot M Visuals, where he called out G Herbo and Lil Bibby for not giving back to the Hood and Gang, and that G Herbo never put in work and that he raps about things he is not a part of. Several others jumped on this train and agreed with Cairo, then Juvi took it one step further and mocked G Herbo's kids by saying all type of disrespectful comments which is unacceptable according to me. EBK Juvi who by the way pretty much admitted to two murders in an argument with Big Talk from Black Mob. Juvi mentioned two locations of his bodies which was not hard for me to puzzle together. One of them is Eric from Black Mob and the other is Bobby from Edge World who he allegedly killed on Edge Day. Both Eric and Bobby were killed in 2013 with a few months apart. Anyway, at first I thought Cairo was not serious and that it was really a maneuver so that G Herbo would not be caught up in a possible RICO case against No Limit with links to the supposed money herb put on the Pocket Town members. However, I'm not so sure after several No Limit members started agreeing with him. Cairo, Bibi and G Herbo seems to be cool still. And Cairo did say in the interview that he still loves him and that Herbo and Bibi is his homies. G Herbo have also commented on several Drench Gang members pages and even posted a picture of Pharaoh and the twins on G Face O'Day, which makes me think that they have somewhat mended the conflict, if there was any. The reason G Herbo posted a picture of Pharaoh and the twins, is because it was rumored that they actually put in work on G Face O'Day by allegedly killing Velo from Death Row. All of them mocked Velo heavy after the murder, and I mean heavy. Also, Pharaoh and the twins was out in traffic that day which they showed on Instagram. However, Death Row claims that Velo was not killed by enemies which makes sense since he was killed two hours from Chicago in an apartment. Pharaoh and the twins are all three cousins with each other and are also cousins with G. Fazo, his brothers, and Jay Ski from No Limit. Pharaoh and the twins are deeply rooted in No Limit and basically grew up in it.
Pharaoh has allegedly drenched gang's top killer with three to five bodies under his belt. Mook from Death Row, Rio G and Dre from KTS, and Spook from Pocket Town. He has also been linked to Savo from Death Row, however, some believe he was killed by the Kings, and then of course he is also linked to Velo from Death Row, however, there were also divided opinions about who killed him. However, if all of them are true, Pharaoh has six bodies under his belt in a dozen of attempts. I personally believe he's around three to four, and that his alleged bodies is Rio G, Spook, Mook, and KT Stray. I don't believe he got Savo nor Velo. In addition, both EB Kalero and Wadamup have said, my lil blood up in here up three on the ops, which could refer to Pharaoh. So I'm guessing he's around those numbers, three to five. Pharaoh has himself stated in an IG post that he is trying to run him to 10 bodies, and it seems that he is on his way to doing so unless he gets locked up before that or in the worst case, God forbid, shot and killed. Other top members from Drench Gang are of course the twins, Twino and Lil Ro, who allegedly got spooked with Pharaoh, Lil Hot who allegedly was one of the killers of KTS Trey, and Lil Loss, allegedly the one who got Rio G with Pharaoh. I have released an incredible amount of information in this video, and finally I just want to remind you that all this information is just rumors and nothing else, I do not say whether it is false or factual. I hope you liked the video, it has taken an incredible amount of research and time to make this video. Feel free to subscribe to the channel, do not forget to leave both a like and a comment. I really hope that the families of all the victims can find peace despite all the horrors. Rest in peace all who have lost their lives to gang violence.